Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien here coming to you from the Storage View Lab. And we've been working lately with our friends over Eaton. And this isn't new. Eaton provides our racks and our power conditioning and batteries and and uh, what else do we have? Power strips. What are the fancy ones called? Uh, PDUs. PDUs, right. Yes. The fancy power strips. Uh, available in a lot of colors, by the way. If you want green, if you want to color coordinate your data center, they'll make you racks and, and PDUs and whatever color you're heart desires, but all of that is irrelevant today. We're looking at the uh, latest 9PX lithium ion uh, battery or UPS today. And this one's really cool because we've had 9PX before, but it was lead acid. Uh, this is lithium ion, like at a high level, what are your, your key takeaways from lithium versus uh, lead acid? Uh, denser, so you can get uh, more capacity with a smaller footprint. Uh, but realistically, it comes down to instead of servicing a battery at every like three to five year intervals, you're five plus years. So in a lot of cases, you're going to be retiring equipment before you have to open the thing up and swap out a battery. So our lead acid 9PX was 3U, right? Before this goes to 2U for similar footprint or similar well, capacity? We've had a couple of the 9PXs. So there's models that uh, it really depends on this. The physical size of the unit depends on the rate of capacities. Uh, and we actually have a 2U and a 3U model, but one's like a 3,000 watt uh, model, one's a, um, a 6,000 watt model. It really right. depends on what your uh, preference is there. So lithium ion gets you uh, faster charging too. It's also a little bit lighter. And then the endurance that you talked about is one of the big selling factors, especially as uh, these go into remote use cases you, know, you could put this in a branch bank with a couple servers, a storage array, and switch, and be good to go, right? Well, yeah, and you, I think a lot of this market has evolved after uh, service contracts, for example, uh, were sold at uh, like five-year intervals, and if you had this paired up with certain equipment, um, at year three, you might have had to send someone out to uh, service a thing, swap out a battery just right. to maintain uh, your service contract. And now you put in one of these models, and the UPS is going to last as long as the service contracting of the rest of the infrastructure, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's a good point, too. So uh, the reduced need for service is there. Uh, we've done a lot of battery swaps before. They make it pretty easy. And in fact, I mean, this is plugged in and running now. So if you hear the whir of the fans, uh, it's just humming along, and it's actually powering the workstation that's doing our recording. So if something goes wrong with this, our recording goes bye-bye. Uh, which will be sad, but uh, for now we trust this thing. On the front, pretty straightforward. It's got a little display that can uh, articulate a bit. Yeah. If it's down low, easier to read it. Uh, it's got, uh, what, your runtime? What what other goodies on there? A little screensaver when it goes to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to show all your basic utilities. I mean, you can turn the thing off. You can turn it back on. You can see what the IP address is if you have one of the network cards installed. Um, overall, I mean, it just gives you all that local data you'd want to see if you were on site. And maybe most critically, runtime when there's a failure based on the load active at that moment on the system. Yeah, and during outages, for example, or partial outages or brownouts, you can see what incoming voltage is or try and diagnose certain problems as you're... And that one's funny because we've had that problem here a couple times where we pulled data off of our Eaton gear and gave it to Duke Energy to say, hey, you know, we had a problem and they'll start off by saying, there's no problem. Then the tech comes out and we show them. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, we have a three-phase environment here, and uh, we've had issues where phases have dropped, or uh, instead of so we're at a two hundred eight uh, three uh, a two hundred eight volt uh, three-phase platform, and we've had situations where our voltage has gone up into the two hundred thirty to two hundred forty volt range. That's free voltage. Yeah, and our one hundred twenty volt side is up in the, like the lower one thirties, and Look it gets a little bit out of bounds. Lights start to flicker and get bright. But uh, the power gear, it just like, it transitioned over, you could hear the uh, fans kick up, and it's like, huh, I wonder what happened. And you dive in and you realize, well, some weird stuff happened. But nothing got hurt, and that's no. the important part. Um, what else on the front of this thing before we spin them around? Um, overall, I mean, it just comes down to how you want to um, like service it when you bring it online. For example, to, to see where the battery pack is, it just kind of clicks in there. And you have your uh, positive and negative wire, and the thing that all the lithium ion systems give you that's lithium a little bit extra a little sensor pack or something is uh, wires for uh, sensors. So these are more um, uh, sensitive to how it's charged, temperatures, things like that. And instead of a lead acid battery, you're just looking at voltage. You're looking at uh, quite a few additional data points for that. So you're going to see a, a couple of additional wires on these types of models. 
Okay, let's go ahead and spin this thing around. So go over where we've got uh, fan. Oh, the card. Okay, so this uh, it's an IPM card. What's it called? It's the Network Two card. Network or Two originally card. Originally, it was the Gigabit Network. Card. All right, whatever it's called. We did a video of Kevin installing this on TikTok. It got over 20,000 views by you uh, power-hungry degenerates. So if you're not following our TikTok, you should be because you get to see behind uh, the scenes kind of action like that, which apparently you guys like. If you're really lucky and Vince works some magic, maybe he'll put the little video up in the corner or somewhere. But uh, we'll see if he's liking that. All right, so what else we got going on back here? So we have a lot of standard uh, connectivity. So for connected to a uh, computer directly, you can do uh, the COM port or serial port or the USB port. Uh, there's also some safety uh, devices built in where uh, you can have it uh, hooked up to like an emergency kill switch where either you lose connectivity or um, you bridge two wires and it just does a fast shutdown in case uh, it's powering something that something lights on fire. Okay. You. In certain cases, I mean, you'd go to pull the power, but if it's connected to the UPS, what do you do? It's, you can build those uh, redundancies in. Uh, there's uh, relay connections for um, uh, additional uh, use cases. Uh, but it really comes down to um, expansion pack uh, connection for uh, adding additional battery capacity. You have your uh, master uh, load connectivity uh, in the middle, and then group one and group two on the side. So, okay, so talk about that a little bit, because I think now we're getting into sort of the, uh, the, the intricacies of power management. So if you're, running, if you're running this at the edge in retail or architect's office or whatever, and you've got your key infrastructure on it, what does that mean from the grouping standpoint? So in an um, edge location, you might have uh, a server and a uh, storage array and maybe switching connected onto the master uh, connections and maybe your POS systems and other things connected to uh, the groups. And if power goes out, you probably want to keep your uh, critical infrastructure online longer than a POS system that could just turn off and reboot. Okay, so you can treat them differently based on the profile. Yeah, it comes into load shedding uh, to optimize run times effectively. Okay, and so the best way to manage some of these things is through software. So we talked about the optional uh, networking card that we've added. Why don't we take a look at that uh, software a little bit and see what that uh, looks like. So like I said, this is actively running right now the recording rig that we're using for the video and so what, what are we looking at here kevin so we got about 140 watt uh, load on the um, uh, ups and if we look up here we uh, i mean we have a pretty decent amount of runtime a lot of these units you're not looking to uh, run them at like five percent load so sure. it's really going to come down to uh, battery capacity based on um, uh, higher loads but you get to see what the output is per a um, output category so if you're looking into well can I shed individual groups you can do that or just kind of get measurements and ideas of uh, some of those additional devices. But this is where the card really comes in and for those that want even more advanced uh, management and integration especially if you're managing multiple locations Eaton's got a number of other software packages to help Not you manage just those. locations you look at our office and we have probably 10 UPS's scattered around so that's just because you like toys yes <laughs> okay what else stands out here in the in the UI? So uh, you have areas to uh, look at environmental uh, devices. So uh, you could have a uh, temperature and humidity sensor hooked up, or multiples, or dry contact. Uh, this would be uh, something in terms of um, let's say you have a uh, rack or a door connected to uh, your little data center or a closet. You can track to see was it open, was it turned, was it. Uh, did something get moved? I mean, like you can start tracking some of those items through uh, uh, this type of interface. Okay. Um, controls, uh, you can turn off uh, the unit itself, uh, the individual groups. Um, so that gets back to that uh, group management you were talking about before. If you're in a failure scenario and you want to get rid of some of the power, you could safely shut down a couple systems this way. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you can create uh, scheduled shutdown uh, activities. So power drops, how long do you want to keep things on? 
Um, and uh, you can also, on the flip side, change it to how uh, the type, of, how much capacity you want in your battery before it turns back on. So the power doesn't come on for like two minutes, and then your thing comes online just to be shut down right away. Right. Okay. Um, and then agents would be uh, devices that are connected into it for um, other third-party applications or IPM, for example. So go back to the main screen then. What would it look like if we were in a failure scenario? Well, we can just pull the uh, power. Yeah. All right, Kevin has yanked the power. Now, I should say we've disabled the alarms so that you don't have to suffer through the beeping. The fan has picked up a teeny little bit, but now we've got all sorts of new indicators on the screen. Yeah, so we can look at the uh, information, the battery, and uh, all those interesting stats. But you really can see the uh, the profile of how the data, or not the data, how the uh, power is moving through uh, this platform. Right now it's going from the battery through the inverter uh, to the output, and we get a nice 120 volts out of it. And uh, let's see, what is our runtime? Um, can you see up in that corner? My eyes are, are not so good, but I, it was something like 90 minutes before. Yeah. And, you know, to be fair, we're running just that single system on it. And I know it seems kind of dumb, but we're using the system, recording the video, unplug it from the wall, and nothing happens. Like, oh, yeah, and that's exactly... I know that's the point, but yeah. it's it's kind of boring yet exciting at the same time to not have any flicker or blips or any, you know, untoward behavior. Yeah, and overall, I mean, you get... A lot of cool features when you go to an enterprise NAS. Uh, a lot of the safety features. NAS. The, or, you get a lot of cool <laughs> features when you move to a uh, enterprise uh, power conditioning platform. Right. So on a consumer uh, system, you might not have the network connectivity or access into that monitoring. But then again, you might. Uh, you probably don't care about the level of monitoring if you just have like a little floor unit powering a NAS or mm -hmm. a, a home router. But when, it, when you're in a business environment, maybe you're monitoring temperatures in your lab or uh, even access in the lab, or you're trying to have uh, safe shutdown for more complex storage uh, platforms. So there's there's a lot of things. Oh, there's, a, there's a ton of reasons. I mean, if you're a home lab or even having something like this is really nice. Um, Cost might be a little bit outside okay, of that. Okay, so that's the thing, right? So lithium ion units are more expensive than that lead acid. This guy runs like 3870. Uh, is MSRP. I'm not sure how much they're they're discounting that. Maybe if you mention Kevin, they'll give you 20% off at checkout. I don't know if I have much. <laughs> I could probably include a free uh, Zen Frog. Yeah, we can get you Zen Frogs. That's no problem. Um, the uh, the Nick is a couple hundred bucks, but it adds a lot of value for what it costs. So that one's a pretty reasonable upgrade. We, anyway, but if you're running this at home and you're and you're doing a home lab. The concept, anyways, is right. Well, yeah, and you could just buy the lead acid version of this if you're a home labber and have all the exact features minus the batter, uh, battery chemistry. And as we all know, keeping the internet up is uh, of critical importance, whether it's at home or maybe in a business. Uh, so having your uh, your inbound uh, cable modem or, or whatever on something like this in addition to your key access point is pretty important to be able to let people finish work or let these systems that are on here remain online and connected to the world for as long oh, yeah. as possible. And security elements, recording, battery. Uh, like if you look at a power Ethernet set uh, setup, you might have a uh, your core switch also powering security cameras and a NAS right. for uh, recording uh, in and around the office. Yeah, so overall there's a ton to like about the lithium ion direction. They're getting bigger in terms of, uh, well, I guess, physically, but also in terms of runtime. So the batteries are getting better, they're getting bigger, they're a little bit lighter, they're more space efficient. Uh, it's definitely the future, don't you think? Yeah, and it comes down to you don't really have to worry about replacing the battery from a lot of use cases. Yes, you can, you, uh, a lot of enterprise platforms will last like years or decades. Sure. But for a lot of businesses, they're looking at like, okay, well, I want to deploy this, but I don't have to send someone out on site to replace a battery midway through the uh, production cycle of that equipment that's being deployed this is the type of thing you can do that and if the price negates to having to fly someone out there to do it to manage that, it. yeah and uh, eaton's warranty on this i think is five years so it's a pretty lengthy jump from uh from the lead acid that's yeah. two or something like that so anyway a lot of reasons to explore lithium ion if you can afford it if it fits in your budget the step up really gets you a lot of good stuff um especially if you're constrained by uh, rack footprint 
or, uh, or, or really want to enjoy any of the other benefits from charge time to longevity to, to all those other reasons to be so excited about lithium ion. Uh, 9PX, we've loved forever. There's another one in the family. Are you letting this one go back to uh, no. Eaton? No. Okay. It's already here. <laughs> yeah, it's a, little, it's a little scuffed on the side, so it's, clearly it's wrecked. It can't go back. So anyway, we really love the Eaton products. This one's no different, and we're glad to have it here. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate your, your support.